J.R. Cole has been making pottery since he's about 14 years old, and he was born in 18 and 90. And uh, he's been here to Sanford and locate this place here in Sanford for about, uh, ever since 1934, 35, and it, he's been making pottery out on his own now for about 42 years. And his father made pottery for him. His grandfather made pottery. And his great-grandfather was a potter making king from Sheffield, England. And they came in, landed in Virginia, and they followed the rivers, kept falling down the different rivers, hunting for clay. Then they landed it up around Asheboro. And that's where Daddy was born and raised up around Asheboro. And uh, when 1934 then, he decided to move out from up in there and get on the highway. And the number one highway then was the main highway. And uh, so he moved out here to get it to pick up the tourist trade and all. And then, back then we had a lot uh, more pottery being made. And we'd have trucks come in here from Florida, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, pick up big truck loads of pottery then. And there was four people was making pottery here then. I mean, a lot more big pieces than what to do now. The trucks come in a lot of times late in the afternoon and spend the night and be up the next morning, two or three o'clock next morning, loading it out. And pick it up, pack it in trucks and wheat straw. And carry it out and sometimes that used to do about, uh, about four or five truckloads of a year like that besides what we sold here and what we shipped out. Done a lot of shipping then. But now we can't do any shipping very little on kind can't get help to work, and people just seem to be that they've gone more far potter and buy it up faster than what we can make it here, having it on the retail. And he has now working for him, he has two of his daughters working for him, and Celia and Neola, and it works for him, it makes potter on the wheel. And Jimmy Smith works for us here, he's been working with Daddy for around about 15, 16 year now. And he's the one that does setting the kills and grinding and mixing the clay. And we fire out a kill of potter here, try to fire out one kill of potter every two weeks. Sometimes it runs a little less and sometimes a little over, but practically every two weeks. And on the days that the kill is open and up and everything, it's like a madhouse and a rush for people flying in to get in the potter. And then at the end of the day, we don't have any left for the customers come around the next day to pick up any. And we just can't, we just simply cannot make enough to supply the people that are wanting it and everything. He doesn't buy any commercial glazes. He buys all raw materials and mixes his own formers and everything. And each time he fires a kill, he usually has some kind of a new glaze that he's experimenting with to see if he can get a new color or something. And every kill that goes in. And that's, actually that's been his whole life is working in the pottery, mixing the colors and everything. And, and that was been about 42 years ago, 42, 43 years ago. And the reason I can remember it so good is on the night that I was born, was the night that he went down and he opened up his first kill and brought out the first colored piece of pottery that he ever made on his own. He had worked with his dad and everything before then. And that was on December the 1st, 1927. And he brought, out, brought it up the next morning, and I was born that night, and he brought it up the next morning for, for Mom to see. And before he started into it, though, he had saved, and had in a savings, and he had a $40. And he asked Mom, Mom said, he asked me, he said, now, Pauline, what do you want me to do? To, uh, build up the back barn or go into the potter bed? And he told him, do whatever you want, Kay. Uh, he's never known nothing else but to make pottery. And another thing that we always thought was peculiar and funny about him, and he's a man, he's set in his ways and everything, is the reason he didn't go on into pottery any quicker because he didn't have enough money together to go into the pottery business on his own. And he worked until he made enough money to go out on his own because he's a person that he does not like to be in debt, to go in debt for anything, even if it's nothing but for 30 minutes. He don't like it. And he just simply waited. A little bit, the mind of a thing I bought when when it was a thing to locate metal wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that made me think of it, seeing you laying that thing down. I bought that thing and planning on going out west to look for gold. And the man that we that we was going to go, oh, I don't know, we, him and his wife didn't agree or something, and they separated, and the man left. The man had been out west and knowed what some gold mines or gold was, and hadn't been minded. There wasn't no machinery there, but it sounded right smart of gold in Colorado. And it is located on top, and we was thinking about, uh, we was aiming to go out uh, and spend maybe a year and see what we can do. I believe we give 210 or $310 for the thing. Uh, if I was a young man, I'd go out to, uh, I'd figure I'd could do good. I figure I could pick up a lot of money. But this man had been out there, and he'd been out and an old town out in California where they sound a lot of gold. And he said, oh, from there it is out in the country like and, and there'd been people, he said, finding them just by looking and panning a little sound gold right much still to rain. Well, that's been about 15 years ago now. And he and his wife separated. And I just, we, he left. And I just give it up to him. Well, I I was getting desperate. I've got some wedding presents I just stopped to take care of, and I told them that I wanted to get some of this pottery, so but they just had to wait for a wedding present. <laughs> yeah, well, the weather isn't right, it doesn't dry right, no, you, you just have a terrible time with it. Well, I'm glad we were able to get some this trip. And if you was called to preach, called, really called to preach, of course the law is now that you have to go and study, study, and all like that. Nowadays, so many pe preachers are out, actually out for the money. Tell you the truth, that's what they're looking for. I know a young man was a preacher, you know, one, he wasn't a preacher, and he come here, and he married a gal right up the road here. And his wife said to him one time, you ought to take so-and-so, a church somewhere around here, says, I believe that preacher's going to leave from this church, you know. He told her, he said, oh, there's not enough money in that, that church for me. Now you see, you know what he was there for the money, wasn't he? He had to be or he wouldn't have said it to him. If you call the preacher, really call the preacher, you don't go there for all this great money. I'll tell you, I think they got that thing all mixed up here all the way around. The way I look at it, yeah, that's the way I look at it. We have a lot of people that's got the orders, and we try to get out around about 22 to 23 orders each time that we complete the kill and everything. And some of them come and pick up, maybe they've got an order for 60 or 70 pieces, come by and 
pick up one piece and then they're waiting the next time to pick up another piece and not finished out on the order. I don't know where any of us would be able to carry it on when that dead passes away, but uh, my sisters and I are really hoping we can and everything. It's kind of hard on women to carry on business like this. And Jimmy didn't want to go with, didn't want to go with his dad. He didn't, didn't go with his mom. And, uh, he wanted to know if he stayed with dad, and mom and daddy took him and raised him until he was about, he was about 10 year old, and his daddy moved to Missouri. Come by here and got his, got Jimmy. And Jimmy went with him out there to Missouri, and he wasn't out there in Missouri just a little while. Shoot, you're coming that Jimmy back in. He had done hitchhike back out from Missouri. <laughs> he didn't like it. He said, he's coming back down here where his granddaddy was at. And he's always called daddy. Granddaddy, and he called mom, mama granddaddy. I thought my mom and daddy, he knew her. Well, actually, the only one he's really ever known and everything. And he's about raising about, I don't know, how many of his grandchildren he's raised. His oldest one raised him. So today, would you, even if I had everything he's got, all the money that he's got, I'd rather have not one dollar. For that man got his money dishonest. When he went in, he'd been in up there in the Senate for a long time, years, and way back he he had to give in some way. He was worth a million dollars. That is just about the time he started to be. A when he first went in as president, and the people cussed about and said, how did he get to be a millionaire? And and, and they, they know what his salary was. He just figured it up, and that's put out in the paper, that he, how did he get to be? He and the man didn't say nothing, he said. All right, when he goes out of president office, up here, I believe what is it, 23 million he's got? I believe that's what they say at 10 million. 23 million. You know he had to steal money. He couldn't help but take money. That work up plans, you know, unlawful to, to his side to get money. I'm going to tell you. I think such president is that we've got a poor makeout, don't you? I think we have. To make good times real boom, these presidents in this country, it seems that they ain't never been one in and out to make the thing just really go. But if you'll start a war, then it's a boom. Then. And it's a boom. Start a war. And these here life to have started. That's 65 and that's 70. And now, uh, they got a couple more out there I think they're looking at. Oh, right. You have to have this warm in here take care of that mold and stuff, huh? Yeah, I've been trying to get ready to go to making some pots ever since this morning. I ain't got to a year and I have to have a little warm water to work, yeah. work in warm water best. I told you that Potter, all them boys, that just killed me. Well, I thought I'd scream. Uh, I'm not sure you know. Well, that's your story. Eat what you're going to eat in the morning and at dinner. And don't eat no supper. See you later. Look, look, don't eat any, honey. Just if you want to, if you want to. Eat a cracker or something like it, but eat your breakfast. He said, I always eat something in the morning, and it did. Well, I and you take a cup of coffee. 
and eat a piece of toast with jelly on it. And here about most of the time I'll eat a whole slice of bacon or a little piece of salt. And that's what I eat. And I've got so weak of yarn of all the better. See this dog from Margaret never goes to get weak and knowing I've got to put something in it. And I eat apple if there are Well, apple's not bad now, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is. You see, boy, I come down here before you come in with the cook tomorrow. You see, I, I never did eat no dinner. I'd run home and get a sandwich when I was there. I just sometimes wouldn't even eat a sandwich now. Yeah. I go eat down here. And then I'd go home Margaret at night and just gut to my bed if it like a wide open at night. Pick up that other today. Don't it's your right. don't do it enough after you eat at night to take care of the mountain. It's ten seconds now, past twelve minutes. This tastes good, Margaret. Yeah, I'll tell it to you, but I'll tell you now, you can buy them in the other colors for 90 cents, mm -hmm. but you buy that in that color, that'll cost you a dollar and a quarter. You see, the red glaze costs me a lot more to make that. You had finished, it was two black things for the front porch, you know, to put a plant in. Mm -hmm. You'd finished those, but we decided just to leave them until you finished the rest. Now, it's been a month or two since I got a card from you, but I haven't needed them until now. See, I had them made for one special club that we belong to, and uh, I just haven't gotten out here to pick them up. Uh, but you did get a card. Mm -hmm. I imagine they figured, I don't know, we get some time more than we can keep up there or something, and maybe it's been a little while, and. Well, it had, like I said, it, but I don't remember when I got the card, but uh, I have this club so seldom that I wasn't in a big hurry for them, you know, when didn't get them ready in July. And I was supposed to have it again this month, so I thought, well, I better run out and pick them up. It was really oversized, your biggest size plate. It was a steak plate was what I was trying to have made, and the mugs, 14 of each. But if you run across them, I'd love to have them. Well, I'll tell you, they could be up there. That's why I was wanting this summer, not after Monday. All right. They'll call you right. They'll call you. Well, right. do, and I'll come right on yeah. out and uh, yeah. get them. But I went around up there several times looking in all those boxes. You wouldn't have any of it down here, would you? No. It It'd all be up there. Yeah. Well, if they run across them, Mr. Cole, just give me a ring. I and sure will. I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll run out and... Uh, yeah, then you could come and pick them up. Right. But if uh, they can't, that's all right, because it's my fault. I just didn't get out here to get them. Well, maybe you can put in another order. Yeah, I will. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'm a little tired. Oh, yeah. Well, another thing what you can't never do. People can be led to a lot of things, but if they drove to it, there's always some malice there. It never works. There's always something flaring up. And I have said from the first start, if they had it, could have went at this other thing some way, besides marching and violence with it, as long as they force them, but you have to keep that force on. You can't never turn it loose. That's the biggest thing. Well, Mr. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, I could sell ten times what I make to dealers that resell parts if I could make it. I quit furnishing. I couldn't. I didn't have enough parts. It's, it's been a trouble world for years, ain't it? 
but it's getting to be a little more so all over the world. And here's the Arabs and the Jews are fighting. Now, now. Sure. I don't know who's in control of that war, that uh, Jew or the Israelite. Well, of course, both sides are in fault. And the Jews who claim they hadn't had their homes took away from homeland way back then. Probably. I'll never forget, I used to sell wire to a Jew down here in Florida. <laughs> He didn't come out and steal, but he said, you know, he, if anything is counted to his side, he wouldn't want to change it at all. If it's a mistake, he, he'd say, well, that's all right. We should have counted it right in the first. Something that way. And he kept coming up. I told him a lot, but I made a lot of things. I'd tell him about $10,000 a year, and he would, and he kept coming up here, and coming up here, and that'd keep it happening long. And I asked him one time, I said, Mark, I want to ask you something. Else. Now, here in this country, a Jew don't feel like he's got his part unless he's cheated you. Cheated you. I said, what is he? Was well, that a way over there? You know, it'd make him mad, but. Get some, get old, and we go to talking again. Mm. But now, I don't live in New York, or nothing like that. I know how you folks do up there. You ask about ten times the price to get to have an argument than to come down to sell it. I ain't that kind. Now, if you want to buy this pot, you buy it at my price, and if you don't want to buy it, don't buy it at all, and don't ask me to sell it no cheap. I sell it at what I can make a living at, and if, and if, and if you don't want to buy it, I wouldn't buy it. I said, now, if you don't want to buy it, I don't want to sell it to you. Well, I'd stop the thing. No more asking about you doing down here. People ain't as bad to do that as they used to be. People used to be as bad. A lot of them from New York and places that way, you know. They expected it, I reckon. They just got used to it. I never see no difference in that is make a price to make a living at but you can't do that quick. That's the way I figured. And not try to not try to rob people. That's another damn thing. I don't, I don't want people robbing me. When they go to buy something, I just wonder why I sort of stand to buy it, you know.